a PETA-sized device that steals encryption keys, free DC Comics, and Google wants everyone to calm down already about the safety of the robot car. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 368 for Friday, June 26, 2015. This show is sponsored by NatureBox. NatureBox ships tasty and guilt-free snacks right to your door with over 100 flavors to choose from, like mini Belgian waffles. You will never get bored of snacking again. Try NatureBox at naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney. Today, you can tweet hashtag love wins to display a rainbow heart on Twitter. You can decorate your Facebook profile with a rainbow flag. You can see rainbow exhaust fumes from an Uber car headed your way, and you can search for marriage equality on Google to see a rainbow colored Easter egg. Also, you have the right to same-sex marriage. The Constitution now guarantees it. Now let's get to the tech news. Joining me today is Roberto Baldwin, senior editor at Engadget. How are you doing, Roberto? I'm okay. How are you doing? I am doing well. Now, you told me today that you had no idea people could watch the interviews that I've done with you in the past after they aired live. So well, I started... I told somebody like a month ago. I found out a month ago because somebody said that someone, when I was at the next web, they're like, oh, I watched one of your interviews, so I know what to do. And I was like, you can do that? <laughs> yeah, people actually watch us, not just live, but you can go to twit.tv. You can uh, watch them anytime you want. You can watch all of the ones that I've done with you and all of the ones that Sarah Lane did with you before. You just have to type in Roberta Baldwin into the twit.tv search box. You can see all of our interviews. Wow. Yes. That's, so. that's they, weekend plans, everybody. <laughs> and Roberto Baldwin. Doc. Right. All your greatest tech predictions are there. And of course, all of them came true. You never once said something that turned out to be completely false. I'm sure that's true. <laughs> right. That sounds about right. So this week, you posted a story on Engadget about how your computer is leaking information, but not in the ways we might think. Uh, what were you talking about? So your computer, the, 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 the chips, your, your processor actually leaks electromagnetic radiation radio waves and it's pulsing. And um, the, uh, some researchers at Tel Aviv University have figured out how to uh, take those pulses and uh, unencrypt your encrypted information, your RSA, uh, your, your PGP stuff, with a device that's a size of a PETA. And so they called it the PETA because they could shove it inside of a PETA. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my first question uh, is, uh, how, why did they release this so that now anyone can do it and uh, and steal all of our stuff? Well, they actually released it after they told the uh, new PG people how to fix it, how to stop people from doing it. And I think it's also important for these researchers to put this information out because it puts uh, not only the people who are making the security software that we use, but also the hardware that we use, how to make it better. Because if you keep this secret, they're never going to get better. And, you know, you, you know they, the, the, the white hack, uh, you know, hackers or the researchers, they actually reach out to the people who they're about to tell the world, oh, by the way, we're going to tell everyone how to hack into your stuff and break your encryption or whatever. And they usually tell them, you know, pretty far in advance, give them a chance to, to fix their stuff. Um, but, you know, it, it, in the long run, it's actually good because it makes our encryption methods uh, stronger, which is important. Right. Well, that was nice of them. They, they, people don't always wait until the security holes. Oh, no, are... yeah. So, <laughs> or, or some large companies, they don't reply to these researchers, and the researchers put it out there, and then the large company is very upset. Right. So who exactly was able to fix this? I mean, whose business was it to fix this hole? Uh, it's uh, the uh, GNUPG uh, folks. It's a uh, bunch of people who work on an, an open source version of PGP. And they were able to uh, fix this. They reached out to those people. They fixed it. And then they released an update to their software so that the PETA could no longer uh, break their encryption. And then once that happened, then they put the information out about the, the PETA, which it's, it's a ridiculous sort of thing. <laughs> and the, the idea was like, oh, we found a PETA in the, in the lab. And so we like, oh, it fits inside the PETA. That's how we're going to name it. I mean, that's... Okay, that's cute, but I think it, on the other hand, um, 
it sort of takes away from the actual you know danger of what this device could actually do when you give it a cutesy name. Um, in reality, you could shove this under a desk. You could stick this in a phone, or you know, like in a you know a Cisco phone behind a TV. You could put it in a lot of places in an area where you could steal someone's you know information, and to sort of give it a cutesy name sort of uh, takes away from how dangerous it could possibly be in the wrong hands. Right, but nobody sus suspects a PETA. That's true. Well, now they do. Now <laughs> I, every PETA I see, I'm concerned. I'm like, what is a PETA doing there? <laughs> So let's talk about another story that you posted this week um, on Engadget. It's a new way to get free comics. Uh, tell us about that. So there is this company, Hoopla. Well, actually, it's it's Midwest Tape, and they make this app called Hoopla. Midwest Tape has been uh, getting books and videos and tapes and whatever for your local libraries for like 25 years, forever. Um, so they created an app that works with your public library. So uh, recently they added ebooks and comics to that app. And this week, they added DC Comics to their app. So if you're, it, it, there's a lot of things that you have, you know, some caveats. A, your, your local um, library has to use support Hoopla. And then it also has to start support these new e-books e e and uh, comic books. Now, that's up to the library itself. So if, you, if it supports Hoopla, you can tell your, your local librarian, hey, I want to be able to read uh, Batman graphic novels on this Hoopla app. And they'll tell the king of the library in that area to, to update it. But if you have a library card and your local library system uh, supports it, you can read Dark Knight. You can read Superman. You know they have twenty five of the biggest uh, DC comic books or, or graphic uh, novels ever. They have Watchmen on there. A lot of Alan Moore stuff. Um, it's it's pretty impressive. But so is this an exclusive deal with Hoopla? I know because there's some other apps. I use Overdrive, uh, which mm -hmm. my lib library uses, and I think most public libraries use to rent ebooks and audiobooks. Um, will it be available there? Or is it exclusive to Hoopla? It's exclusive to Hoopla, uh, and it's mostly because, like I said, they have that sort of that back end, that Midwest tape relationship with a lot of these libraries. Um, and you know, I, I, I've used Overdrive on you know my tablets and on my my. Uh, you know, the, the, the Kindle and the Sony Reader before they went defunct, it actually had the best implementation of using Overdrive. But even it's so convoluted to set up Overdrive on your devices. It's and, and the Hoopla app is just you open the app, you link it to your library with your library card, and that's it. So they, they're trying to sort of cut down the amount of work to get, uh, to get your library books. Right. Um, have you used Overdrive recently on your iPhone? Uh, not recently on the iPhone. I think they might have upgraded it. I, I just yeah. recently uh, installed it. It's pretty easy. Oh, I mean, okay. You know, it might be difficult for you, but for most people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm too busy worrying about pita sandwiches sitting around in random places. To be Look at that. All those. All those yeah. pitas could be, any one of them could be stealing your information and sharing it with the world. Yes. Uh, so are, are DC Comics making any money off of this if we're seeing them for free? Or is, is who's making money off of this? Uh, I mean, well, they're they're going to make some money off of it. It's, it's you know, it's it's the sort you know, it's the same sort of whatever money libraries get from from or libraries give to to booksellers and to these uh, you know these third parties like Midwest Tape who you know get uh, these books to uh, individuals from the library. But so it's, you're. You can't get the any. You can't get anything. You said there was limited. Um, and can you get the titles as soon as they're released? That is still something that you know they it, Midwest Tape would be happy if that was uh, something that they could do. But it just more likely it's going to be uh, there's going to be windowing like the same way you see on Netflix. So on Netflix, you know you're not going to get a movie right when it comes into a theater. Uh, you may get it about the same time as the DVD release, or if the uh, you know maybe a few months after the DVD release. So. Uh, DC Comics is going to do the same thing. You know, it's going to come out in your local comic book store or on their own uh, DC app, and then maybe a few weeks later, maybe a few months later, they're still trying to figure out um, how they're going to do that. They're sort of they're they're, they're watching and and to see how the uh, how the hoopla use of uh, DC Comics uh, goes over. If it goes over really well, then you know they might be more open to uh, cutting down that sort of windowing time into something that you, know, you so maybe a month or two later. So if you're willing to wait and there's some titles that you haven't you know, caught up on um, and you don't want the most fan the fanciest, newest thing, then this is a good yeah. opportunity for you. Yeah, I mean, these, I mean the, their catalog is billions, I don't know, lots and lots of comics. Yeah, I mean, no one can ever read all the comics. That would be impossible. 
Now's your chance if they're not. <laughs> right. Well, Roberto, Take your jobs, everybody. Read comics. <laughs> yes, make it your job, like yours. Roberto, thank you so much. Roberto Baldwin is the senior editor at Engadget, and he is at Strange Ways. That's no vowels, unless you count Y as a value, vowel on Twitter. Is there anything sometimes. else you need to... You, you do sometimes count Y as a value? Vi- vowel. Well, the, the song tells me. The song tells me sometimes <laughs> right. you should count Y. So is there anything else you need to tell us about? I won't ask what you're working on. I usually uh, ask that to people, and they can't tell me. Oh, I, my band is playing July 3rd at Rickshaw Stop. Look at that. Shameless plug. <laughs> That's in San Francisco, right? San Francisco, yes. Okay. We'll all be there. <laughs> Yay. And I'll give you a little overdrive tutorial when I'm there. Okay, cool. You <laughs> just come up to the stage and be like, this is just pit install. Come on. <laughs> Thank Get you. Get together, Rob. Robbie. <laughs> Thanks, Roberto. Take care. Thanks. Coming up, Disney hates your selfie stick and an ingenious Kickstarter to kick your kids out of the house. But first, this episode is brought to you by NatureBox. Right now at NatureBox, you can get a free trial of their favorite snacks. You just pay $2 for the shipping. People snack. There is no shame in it. But when I snack, I want it to be worth it. I've been hearing about NatureBox for a while on a whole bunch of different podcasts, but it wasn't until I came here that I finally got to try them. And I wish that I hadn't waited that long. And I don't think you want to wait that long, too. With NatureBox, you choose from over 100 health and healthy and crave-worthy options to be delivered right to your door. So next time you're hungry, grab strawberry lemonade, fruit stars, or sweet and salty nut medley, and get smart about snacking. Right now, if you go to naturebox.com slash twit, you can get a trial of their favorite snacks delivered to your door. What are you waiting for? Go to naturebox.com slash twit to start your trial today. And we thank Naturebox for their support of Tech News Tonight. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Today, Disney joined the ranks of public places that have banned the selfie stick. The Orlando Sentinel reports that as of this coming Tuesday, the wands of Narcissus will be officially unwelcome in the Disney World theme park. The sticks also will not be allowed in Disneyland, Disney World water parks, or Disney Quest. That's a gaming attraction at Downtown Disney. There is no word yet on whether Disney has banned your arm. The battle your arm can it just use your arm or don't take a selfie the battle over the safety of the self-driving car is raging and i plan to report it as it happens for the record i am not promising to report this without bias i am team robot car i hate driving i think ours technica is team robot car too this morning they reported exaggerated a they reported that reuters exaggerated a story claiming that two self-driving cars had a close call in silicon valley this week Ars Technica dug into the story and learned that a self-driving prototype, the Audi Q5, did not cut off a self-driving Google car. Our car did exactly what it was supposed to do, said a representative from Delphi. They make the Audi Q5, Audi Q5. (laughs) Google agreed and said the headline should be, two self-driving cars did what they were supposed to do in an ordinary, everyday driving scenario. But who would click on that, Google? Nobody. It took eight tweets for Twitter's VP of corporate development, Rishi Garg, to announce that he was leaving the company. Garg has only been at Twitter for a year, but during that time, the company made some key acquisitions, including the live streaming app Periscope. Garg was formerly the head of corporate development at Square. Threat Post says that users of Hotels.com may have been victims of a phishing scam. Some customers have been tricked into disclosing their names, phone numbers, email addresses, and travel bookings through fake phishing emails and SMS messages. Those affected have been notified, and Hotels.com has responded by adding multi-factor authentication between their hotel partners. And finally, TechCrunch is featuring a cool Kickstarter that's the solution to every parent's problem, how to teach kids about tech and to get them to keep playing outside. Nature Bites is a wildlife camera powered by a Raspberry Pi. The camera is designed for kid makers or any makers who want to learn more about nature by taking photos of wild animals, including those that are normally camera shy. I think we might have a video. Uh, Let's take a look at that camera case. To take stealthy, high-definition images of wildlife. Beginner, expert, wildlife enthusiast or hacker, the Raspberry Pi Powered Kit is a fun way to develop the digital making skills for an exciting new insight into the natural world. Nature Bites is a community of conservationists, educators, digital makers and designers, and we want to show people how they can use technology it looks very cool. Uh, I would like one. Um, so you can support that Kickstarter campaign if you're interested. Uh, we will put a link to that in the show notes. And that um, if and I hope when it gets made, 
I'm sure we will feature it on one of our shows. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And of course, you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.